In this video, we will focus our discussion on the learning competency Using hazard maps, identify areas prone to hazards brought about by tropical cyclones, monsoons, floods, or ipu-ipu. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to 1. Identify the different types of hydrometeorological hazards and number 2. Explain the hazards brought about by tropical cyclones, monsoons, floods, or ipu-ipu. The Philippines is located along a typhoon belt or the so-called Pacific Ring of Fire. It has suffered from a countless number of deadly typhoons, earthquakes, and other natural disasters. All these natural disasters are hazards that our country experienced. We define hydrometeorological hazards as a process or phenomenon of atmospheric, hydrological, or oceanographic nature that may cause loss of life, injury, or other health impacts, property damage, loss of livelihoods and services, social and economic disruption, or environmental damage. These hydrometeorological hazards include tropical cyclones, thunderstorms, tornadoes, El Nino and La Nina, monsoons, storm surges, and floods. Tropical cyclone is a severe weather disturbance characterized by strong winds and heavy rains which revolve around a central low-pressure area. The Philippines is used to powerful storms. It is hit by an average of 20 storms and typhoons a year. Now what are the hazards caused by tropical cyclones and how does it form? Let's watch this. Strong winds, heavy rains, floods, storm surges. These are just some of the hazards that are brought by tropical cyclones. The formation of tropical cyclones is a natural phenomenon that is used by the Earth to attain balance or equilibrium transferring energy from the equator to colder parts of the Earth. They are called by various names. In the Northwest Pacific, we call them typhoons. In the Indian Ocean and Southwest Pacific, they are called cyclones. And in the Atlantic, they are called hurricanes. They are often found to form within the Intertropical Convergence Zone, or the ITCZ, where the Northeast and Southeast trade winds meet. Typhoons form just like how ordinary rain clouds form. They start from the evaporation of water molecules from the ocean. Because this moist air is warm, they travel upwards until they meet with cold air. At this point, they start to condense and form clouds, resulting in rain showers. The clouds dissipate and vanish after precipitation is completed. With a very active system, clouds can group together into large clusters of thunderstorms. These clusters of clouds are areas of low pressure in the atmosphere. When combined with warm ocean waters, typically over 26 degrees Celsius, they join two of the key ingredients in transforming ordinary clouds into deadly typhoons. Converging winds also help the movement of warm, moist air from the ocean upwards and contribute to the circulation of the typhoon. With an organized circulation, the low-pressure area becomes a tropical depression. As the tropical depression drifts, it may encounter areas of the ocean where it is exceptionally warm. This will further drive the increase of its circulation, transforming it into a typhoon. And when conditions are ideal, the system starts to rotate even faster, and now on a clear center, the eye of the typhoon. This is a look inside perhaps one of the strongest storms in recorded history. Oh my God. Shit. Super Typhoon Haiyan has made a direct hit on the island. The typhoon slammed into the Philippines at 4.30 a.m. Friday morning with winds of 195 miles per hour and gusts of 235 miles an hour. That's higher than the winds from Hurricane Sandy and Katrina combined. The powerful storm plowed through the island, leaving homes and buildings destroyed. Government officials say many devastated areas will be uninhabitable for months. The country's president says they are facing a calamity. 
This was the scene in Tacloban City, which was in the direct path of the storm. This reporter from CNN affiliate ABS-CBN was forced inside as the storm barreled in and watched the street below him become a flood zone. Water from the storm as high as 10 feet in some areas. Two barges near the city of Bahal were left stranded. The huge waves prevented rescue crews from reaching them. Crew members abandoned ship by jumping into the churning water, trying to scramble back to land. As of now, one of the crew remains missing. The typhoon came with warning. 125,000 people were able to seek refuge in evacuation shelters. And in some places, the cleanup has already begun. But aid workers have not been able to reach some of the hardest hit areas. So the full picture of the devastation from this powerful storm is still unknown. The type of tropical cyclone is characterized by the maximum sustained wind speed. 64 kilometers per hour, it is called tropical depression, 118 tropical storm, 200 typhoon, and greater than 200, it is called super typhoon. Next is thunderstorm, a violent short weather disturbance that is almost always associated with lightning, thunder, dense clouds, heavy rain or hail, and strong gusty winds. Thunderstorms arise when layers of warm, moist air rise to cooler regions of the atmosphere. The moisture condenses to form towering cumulonimbus clouds and eventually precipitate. Electrical charges accumulate on cloud particles. Lightning discharges occur when the accumulated electric charge becomes sufficiently large. Lightning hits the air it passes through so intensely and quickly that shock waves are produced. These shock waves are heard as claps and rolls of thunder. Severe thunderstorms can cause injury or death and can also result in substantial property damage. Many hazardous weather events are associated with thunderstorms. Lightning is responsible for several fires around the world each year, as well as causing deaths when people are struck. Under the right conditions, rainfall from thunderstorms can cause flash flooding, which can change small creeks into raging torrents in a matter of minutes, washing away large boulders and man-made structures. Next, we have floods, an overflow of water onto normally dry land. The outpouring of a normally dry area caused by rising water in an existing waterway, such as a river, stream or drainage waterway. A flood caused by heavy or excessive rainfall in a short period of time, generally less than six hours, is called flash flood. These are usually characterized by raging fast-moving water after heavy rains that rip through riverbeds, urban streets or mountain valleys sweeping everything before them. Storm surge is a typical rise of water generated by a storm, over and above the predicted astronomical tides. Storm surge should not be confused with storm tide, which is defined as the water level rise due to the combination of storm surge and the astronomical tide. Next, we have tornado, locally known as ipo-ipo, having narrow funnel or cylindrical shaped and intensely rotating columns of winds that form during powerful thunderstorms and extends from the base of the cumulonimbus cloud down to the Earth's surface. Tornadoes are a dangerous force of nature. It rotates usually in a counterclockwise direction and reach speeds of up to almost 500 km per hour. Tornadoes can flatten houses and lift cars off the ground.
Next, we have monsoon, a weather pattern. In the Philippines, we have the southwest monsoon and the northeast monsoon. Southwest monsoon or summer monsoon, locally called habagat, is characterized by a strong, generally west or southwest breeze that is responsible for bringing significant rainfall to the Asian subcontinent and to South and East Asia. Northeast monsoon or winter monsoon, locally called the Amihan, this weather features a generally less strong east or northeast breeze that is cooler and drier, with prolonged periods of successive cloudless days. Next, we have El Niño, a prolonged unusual warming of sea surface temperature in central and eastern equatorial Pacific. This natural phenomenon occurs at irregular intervals of 2 to 7 years and lasts for 9 months or 2 years at most. It results to the warmer water concentrated in the west and colder water in the east. El Niño will most likely bring severe drought. It is believed that it causes stronger thunderstorm disturbance and massive storms. It also causes the decrease in the population of some species. La Niña is the opposite of El Niño. It is a prolonged unusual cooling of sea temperatures in central and eastern equatorial Pacific that may last for one to three years. People will likely experience above normal rainfall during La Niña. In order to mitigate the hazards and risks in your community, hazard maps are used. It encourages everyone in the community to take action to prevent a possible disaster or reduce its effect if it happens. Hazard map is a map that highlights areas that are affected by or are vulnerable to a particular hazard. Normally created for natural hazards such as earthquakes, volcanoes, landslides, flooding, and tsunamis. Hazard maps help prevent serious damage and deaths. Hazard maps are effective tools for promoting risk awareness, for designing evacuation procedures, and for deciding the locations of evacuation facilities and shelters. Hazard maps should be easy to understand and easy to use for purposes of prompt evacuation, and users should be aware of the limitations and uncertainties of the information they contain. And that ends our lesson. I hope you learned something today. Congratulations! Thank you for watching.